Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager for Autodesk. In this Tips and Tricks, I will cover with you how you can create your own custom materials in Showcase. To create your own custom material in Showcase, I highly suggest that you start by using a generic Showcase material and applying to your object. And we'll review the properties of this specific material together. So now I've just applied this generic showcase material to all of my object in my scene. And let's open the material properties and review all of the presets. So first of all, you can rename your material. So pretty straightforward. Now, before you start changing any of the presets, it's important that you have all the objects that are using this material selected. So when you start adjusting the preset, it will be adjusted on the material that's used in your scene instead of duplicating the materials. So the next preset over is color. So use a color. So if I click in a color swap, obviously I'll be able to choose any color I want from the color wheel and I can go different intensity. I can enter RGB level if I want. And basically I have direct feedback in a viewport. Then the other thing you can do is use an image file. So here by clicking on the, on the folder icon, you'll be able to load any of a PNG, TIFF image, uh, JPEG image, and basically it will bring you to the showcase texture library, which sits in the uh, program file folder where uh, when you install showcase and basically you can load any TIFF, PNG, uh, JPEG image from your own texture library or from the showcase library. So I'm just going to load a wood here so we get to see how it works. So when you load a texture, by default, the, ma the mapping type will be set to parametric UV, which basically means that it's using the UV of the model itself. Now you can change that to a planar projection, triplanar projection, or cylindrical projection. Now most of the time when you're using um, 3D object, triplanar will be the way to go. Now the texture still doesn't look like what I'm looking for. So obviously you need to adjust the size of the texture onto your object. So first I'm going to start increasing the scale and you'll see that I'm starting to see the grain wood of my object. So by changing the X, Y, Z scaling size of my texture, I am increasing the size and perhaps this is adjusting the texture to the size of my object. Now, if I zoom closer, you'll notice that this is a triplanar projection and it might work for most of my object or it might be problematic for some of my object. It seemed to be working well on the box, maybe not so much on the balls and great on the car as well. So for most 3D object, triplanar projection is going to be the style of projection that you'll end up using for most case scenario. Now, this texture might still be too small for my objects or it might not be angled the way that I want it. Now, to help you with that, you can visually see the size of your texture by clicking the move texture button. So you see, it gives me the representation of the triplanar projection and I can adjust the, sc the scale. Uh, visually, you see I have a feedback in my viewport as I'm adjusting the scale and you see that it's also um, adjusting the X, Y, Z, I can press the auto fit button, which will fit it into my 3D model. I can also rotate this uh, texture. So you see that the wood grain now is starting to be in a certain angle. Now you notice that I've changed only the uh, UV projection of my box. So now I have duplicated my material and only adjust the UV mapping of my box itself. But I can change the ball UV mapping separately that will duplicate my material. But sometimes that's something you have to do in order to have different uh, projection map for each of the objects you require. So they all have the same material, but they have different UV map and therefore it's creating multiple materials. So now for the car, perhaps this texture needs to be bigger and have a bigger wood grain um, and adjust it differently. So I can go ahead and start moving my triplanar projection, adjust the scale, rotate it and position it where I want it onto uh, my model. So using the uh, move 
a projection plane will allow you to adjust your, the texture appropriately for each of your models. So something to keep in mind if you're planning to use an image into the color swap of your uh, custom material. So we'll just go, go back to a using a color, which is the red that we had set up before, and reapply this material to all the objects. Okay, before I start talking about reflection, I'm gonna hide the uh, selection highlight on the object so we get to focus on the reflection a little easier, which is something you might wanna consider. So my object is still selected, the, I'm just hiding the selection highlight. So obviously the reflectivity, you can, you can turn it on or off of your material. So if you wanna have a matte material, you would turn the reflectivity off. By default, it does reflect the environment. Now let's have a look at the uh, settings here. So by default, it also use a reflection that depends on the viewing angle. So you see, as I'm changing the angle that I'm looking at the model, the material is more or less reflecting depending on the viewing angle. Now it also gets affected by the curve that is set of that viewing angle. So you see, as I'm changing the curvature of this viewing angle, it's adjusting the bias, the scale, the power of the reflection, and it's affecting the look, how this reflection is viewed on my material. Now I can't tell you what curve you need for specific material because I don't know what you're trying to achieve, but what I can tell you is that when you start customizing your material, it's always easier to start with a showcase material that has similar reflectivity value that you're looking for and then fine tune it and customize it, customize it for your need. So you see as I'm changing the curvature here, uh, the reflection gets affected. Now you can also choose to have a reflection that is constant across the surface. So it's always reflecting the same way and it's no longer depending on the viewing angle. Now when you do have this type of reflection, you have different settings. So you have overall reflectivity, highlight size. So what's the highlight of this reflectivity, like the white portion or the brightest portion of this reflection. If you're focusing on the tip of the car here, you see if I go bigger, the highlight gets larger. And if I go smaller, then the highlight is uh, smaller, obviously. And then you can uh, change the transition of this highlight. Is it more a gradient transition or is it more of a sharp um, a highlight that you're looking for? So let's go back to a reflection that is depending on the viewing angle. Now you also have highlight size and highlight transition setting for this type of reflection as well that we just review. Now the next setting over is reflection type. By default is set to non-metallic, do not tint reflection. You can change that to metallic, use a material color to tint the reflection. So the material color is red in our case, and this is how it's gonna tint the reflection. Now, if I change the material color, it will tint the reflection according to the color of the material. Now, the other option over is to use a custom color to tint the reflection. Then I will open the slot that will allow you to add a custom color to tint that reflection, which is something you might wanna look into. So we'll keep it to non-metallic for now. Now the next setting is absorb reflection. Now I'm gonna go closer and really focus here on the environment that's being reflected into your material. Now, as I am adjusting this setting, you see that the reflection gets absorbed by the material. It somewhat fades away and the material is more dominant than the reflection itself. So it absorbs the reflection within the material. Uh, now, the next setting that is new to 2013 is the fact that you can enable blurred reflection and refraction. Now, if you focus on the reflection itself, you see crane, you see a uh, building that belongs to the reflection. Now, if I enable the blur reflection and I slowly adjust the setting, you'll see that it's blurring the edge of the reflection to give you somewhat of a uh, satin finish. So it's blurring this reflection. It's still reflective. If I pick a different angle here and adjust the reflection, it's still reflective, but the reflection is now blurred. So it's got a different finish 
on that reflection. So this is a new setting. If we focus on the ball, sometimes it's easier to understand. I'm going to reduce the blurred reflection here slowly and you see that the reflection becomes more crisp and more sharp, somewhat like a mirror type of reflection, whereas I increase the blur, then it's becoming more of a satin finish. Now, keep in mind that all of these settings will uh, um, be available if you choose to use a, a reflection map. Now, if you choose this option, you just have to load a map in this uh, map slots and that will be reflected to your material. Now, the type of map that you'll need to use is a lat long map. So there's different type. There's either a cross, there's either a ball reflection, or there's a lat long, which is that rectangular style of reflection. So if you do have a uh, reflection that you want to use instead of using the environment reflection, this is where you would load it for your material. Now, the next setting over is called clear coat, which is turned off by default. I'm going to turn it on and off so you get to see that. The clear coat is something you'll use really rarely. It's basically a double coating of reflection. So let's say your material is reflective and you have a varnish coat or a clear coat on top of it that is also reflective, uh, then that's where you will adjust the setting. Now, the settings are very similar to the reflectivity setting. So I'm not going to review them since we just review them and we're going to focus now on the transparency. 